Hi guys, how are you? Whew, how's everybody doing this Thursday? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> how are you guys doing? Are you guys rocking the week? Have you been making amazing things? I uh, have not. <laughs> I'm kind of creeping along pretty slow this week, unfortunately. Um, but I'm getting things done. I'm getting things done. Joan and Colleen were here yesterday helping to work on our inventory. And uh, that's taking shape slowly but surely. And of course, it's always fun to get to be with them. So, um, yeah. <laughs> hi, Nicole. Hi, Maggie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Claire. It's so good to see you. Hi, Sherry. You guys, I forgot to make a um, to make an event for today's project. I apologize for that. Yesterday, I um, I just got busy after Colleen and Joan left. I got busy working on kits for tomorrow, and I completely forgot to make an event and to take a picture of today's project. Um, so I apologize for that, but I gotta tell you, today's project is one that everybody is going to like because it's easy, but the results are so pretty. I This is one of my favorites. And I don't know why we haven't done it this way before. We've actually made a goddess bracelet before, but we used wire to do it. Today, I'm gonna show you how to cheat and use jump rings. And I gotta say, I kinda like the results better with the jump rings than I do with the wire. I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, I'll leave that definitely up to you, but I, I just kinda like the way the jump rings look. So that being said, you're gonna need a lot of jump rings for today's project. In fact, I don't even have an, an accurate count of how many jump rings you're gonna need because it's gonna kinda vary from person to person and how large your uh, bracelet needs to be. So some of you will need um, less and some of you will need more, but um, gosh, it's so easy. And I think you guys are gonna take it and run with it. A lot of you have already seen this on other designers pages, I'm sure. You guys, this is not like a brand new design by any means, but um, I think everybody has kind of a different take on it. And you can actually do this with cord and use a button for your clasp. We're gonna do ours with bead stringing wire and use some crimps for ours. Um, just because it's easy <laughs> and who doesn't like easy maggie says she's excited i'm glad i'm glad i hope you guys like this one i think you will it's really really pretty um in the meantime though um let's see what do we got coming up well not in the meantime but not only do we have <laughs> a cool project for today but we have tomorrow is our feel good friday show and i've been working on kits for our feel good friday show guys so far i only have two kits and I know you can tell from my voice it's because I am still sick. In fact, today I kind of feel worse than I have felt all week. I actually have bronchitis. It's not anything serious. I, um, I'm i really susceptible to bronchitis. So that's why I sound like I'm kind of talking through a paper towel tube. Um, but I'm still managing to get work done. I'm just going really slow. <laughs> and I'm very sweaty today. Like my body temperature is up because I'm like fighting it off. Um, but... I'm still here, I'm still working, and I'm still putting kits together for tomorrow. So our Feel Good Friday show is going to be um, another fun one, as always. And then Saturday is a busy day for me. I hope I'm feeling better by Saturday because I've got a Michaels class at 2 p.m. Eastern time. If you guys want to sign up for that, if you haven't already, I will be doing a sun catcher project. It's really, really beautiful and easy and fun. And then I will be at Sam's Beach Shop for Sam. I'll be with Sam and Sam's Beach Shop uh, at 7 p.m. It might be 6 p.m. I think it's 6 p.m. <laughs> 6 or 7. I'm pretty sure it's 6. <laughs> Eastern time uh, with Sam to do another um, project with him. And that'll be my last project with Sam for a little while. That doesn't mean that's the last you're going to see of me and Sam together because we're friends and, you know, we like to support each other and do fun things together. Um, but as far as my series is concerned, this Saturday is my last in the series of classes I'm doing for Sam. So Angela says, we understand if you took off to rest and recoup. I can't. I can't take off and rest. I took off last week. <laughs> it's unfortunate that I have bronchitis this week. But then I look at it and I'm like, well, if I had had bronchitis last week when I was off, then I wouldn't have enjoyed my vacation. But um, yeah, so yeah, 6 p.m. is his regular time. That's what time it'll be. Thank you. I get all my times confused. 
So thank you for keeping up with that for me. Um, yeah, I've got a really nasty headache too. Somebody just said they had a, had a migraine. I have bronchitis and all the fun things that go with it. <laughs> and I also have like a screaming migraine. This is, it's less than the migraines I've had in a while, but like, I feel like my head's in a vice and I know a lot of it is just, um, sinus pressure. I will, I'll find some time to rest later. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. I'm not quite wicked, but that's what they say, right? I will rest. I'll, I'll stop early today. It's Thursday. I don't have an extra live today. So, um, okay. So let's talk about today's project. Today's project, I wish I had a sample for you, but I don't. Uh, we're going to make a goddess style bracelet. And I don't know, some of you may not know what a goddess style bracelet is. Goddess style bracelet is where you've got two rows of beads, but it appears that it is just one row of beads in a chevron. And it's kind of an optical illusion the way that it, it turns out. But there are chevrons in between... What am I doing? <laughs> there are chevrons in between the beads and it makes it kind of bumpy in texture. And we've done it before with wire. We're going to cheat today and use jump rings because it's so pretty. Don't tell anybody we're cheating. <laughs> thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's get turned around and get to it, shall we? Because I know you guys are going to love this one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so, guys, I am, I don't, I try to rest, I try to, you guys know, I have a really hard time sitting still. <laughs> My ADHD brain does not let me rest for long. It's like, oh, I gotta get in here and do, I gotta do all the things. Okay, so these are the beads. Let me just show them to you real quick. I grabbed these at Michael's. They're bead landing beads, and I have these in a variety of colors, um, but they're just pretty. Aren't they pretty? They're kind of mermaidy feeling. So I thought that they would look really good with this bracelet. I think we'll only need one strand of the two, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. We can use both if we need to. Aren't they pretty though? They have that like iridescent yumminess to them. Okay. And also I'm going to be using the tying station to hold mine on. I'm going to use the tying station in a weird way that we've never used before. If you don't have a tying station, that's okay. Use some painter's tape um, to hold your work down or a clipboard or something like that. But you're really going to need to be able to attach one end to something. Um, it's just going to make life a lot easier for you. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use these little holes. We're going to use one of these little holes. We're going to use the one on the end. And I'm actually going to turn my acrylic plate to the side. The only problem with this is because my bracelet won't start until right here at the one inch mark, that means that I'm one inch shorter in my measurements. So you just kind of have to keep that in mind, right? So we'll have to, we'll have to make up the difference in the length. I'll show you how we're going to do that here in just a second. So I'm using some bead stringing wire. I'm using some 49 strand bead stringing wire in this really beautiful silver color. Um, just because I know, <laughs> Robin says, I see the peeling. I know, please excuse the, I am, I'm molting. <laughs> I'm molting, you guys. As my sunburn is finally starting to heal, it itches like crazy. Um, it came all the way down to my hand, but I am, I'm going to be using some of this. You're only going to be able to see just a tiny bit of this, but my beads are very transparent or translucent. Um, so just in case I wanted to have a pretty bead stringing wire, as you will see a tiny, tiny little bit of this at, of this at the beginning of the bracelet and at the end of the bracelet. Okay. Just a little though. So I have cut, because I'm just going to use one strand for this, I've cut about 20 to 24 inches. I know that's a lot. It's a lot more than you actually are going to need, but it's better to be safe than sorry with this um, because you can't add to it and you want to be sure you have enough wire. So I've folded it in half, okay, and I'm going to take a wire guardian and I'm going to thread a wire guardian on and I'm going to bring that wire guardian to that halfway point on my bead stringing wire. So I'm going to pull, okay, pull out my ends so that I have two even strands coming out of my wire guardian. 
Okay, so here are my ends. Wire Guardian is in the center of the bead stringing wire. This is actually gonna be one end of our bracelet. Okay, now I'm gonna take both ends and I'm gonna use a crimp tube for this. You can use a crimp um, bead if you want to. I just prefer the tubes. Um, I'm just kind of partial to them. I did not mean to dump out a million of them, but I did. Um, so I'm gonna take one of my crimp tubes and I'm gonna thread it onto both of the strands, okay? And I'm gonna bring that all the way down here to our wire guardian. <laughs> you guys hear Albert? <laughs> panting very hard today. <laughs> it's every day, but today it seems very loud. I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's quiet in my house today. Okay, so now I'm going to crimp, and I'm going to crimp this with my regular crimping pliers or my crimper tool, okay, just the regular. I still want to treat this like a regular stringing project, so I want to be sure that I use the back notch, the one with the little tooth that comes down that's going to separate the wires within the crimp, okay, and I want to be sure ahead of time that my wires are not crisscrossing inside that crimp tube, so they're not touching, okay, so I like to, if I can, get my finger in between there. Hold on. Come on, fingers work today. All right, are those twisted? Looks like they are, hold on. Nope, okay. And I'm gonna crimp, okay? That just separates the wires within the crimp tube with that little tooth. And then I'm gonna place it in the front notch, the one that's oval shaped. And I'm gonna give it a squeeze and that's just gonna tidy up that crimp and make it a little bit smaller, okay? So it's nice and compact. Now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use a crimp cover. I don't use crimp cover covers a lot. Uh, I'm just not a fan. But for this project, I am gonna use a couple of crimp covers. And this is for my friend Colleen. Colleen struggles with her crimp covers. And if she struggles, I know some of you out there as well struggle. So, I'm gonna show you the easy trick for your crimp covers and putting them on. So here's our crimp, here's our crimp cover. We're gonna place it over the crimp, okay? And hold it in place. Now, if you don't have one of these, this is why you're having a hard time. You need the mighty, mighty crimper, okay? So the mighty crimper is actually a crimp tool, but it's made, see how much bigger it is than my regular crimper? It's made for those great big crimps, right? For your, your size three and your size four crimps. But because that front notch on it is, see that oval? It's so much larger than the regular size crimper tool. You can use it just put it over your crimp cover and squeeze. And look how nicely it's gonna close your crimp cover over your crimp. You guys, that's the way to do it. Oh, it didn't cover. <laughs> it slipped through there. But it keeps that crimp cover in a nice round shape. It keeps it from, you know, getting flat or getting squished. And it also keeps you from marking it up with your pliers. So this is my favorite tool, not for crimping, but for putting the crimp covers on. How handy is that, right? And then it doubles because it also is a mighty crimper tool and you can use it for your great big fat crimps. But I mean, you know, I, I use it for my crimp covers more than anything. Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll. We've got two strands. One end of our bracelet is all ready. All it's gonna need is just a clasp and it'll be ready to go. But we've got our two strands to work with to create our goddess style bracelet. Now I'm going to attach this to our tying station. I'm going to attach this in a really weird way. Okay, so normally your acrylic plate on your tying station faces this direction. But for today, we're going to turn it this way so that I can use this bottom ring right here. And I can't attach my wire guardian to that. I'll never get it off. Plus the fact that the surface area is really big here. It's way bigger than my wire guardian. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to improvise. And I'm going to sit this down because it's all over the place here. I'm gonna grab a large, one of the largest jump rings I can find. It doesn't matter what color it is because it's not part of the design. We're just using it as a connector for the moment. And I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me guys, I feel like my voice sounds terrible. I'm gonna take 
a really large jump ring. I'm gonna open it up nice and wide. I'm gonna hook that onto my wire guardian, okay? And then I'm gonna hook it to this ring. Slide back up there and stay. <laughs> I'm gonna hook it to that little loop on the tying station. And I'm gonna attempt to close it back. Now, it's not gonna close completely because even this really big jump ring is larger than the ring, but I don't care as long as my wire guardian doesn't slip off. And I'm gonna tighten this down, okay? And so this is attached, right? Because I can't, I can't put it over the peg on the tying station because all I've got here is just my, <laughs> my crib cover that doesn't wanna stay. It will in a minute. But I can't put my wire guardian over this peg. I also can't put my wire guardian around the acrylic plate as I'll never get it off. So I'm just using this jump, or yeah, this jump ring temporarily, temporarily <laughs> as an attachment here. But it also means that my measurement doesn't start up here. It's gonna start down here. So we're an inch off already. So just keep that in mind, okay? All right, now we're ready to do the bracelet. And this part is like beyond easy. It's so easy. I don't wanna attach my uh, bottom ends because I gotta have both bottom ends free, but it makes life easier to have the top attached to something, okay? So now I need jump rings and I'm gonna need a bunch of jump rings. So I'm gonna dump out. I'm using six millimeter jump rings, okay? And I'm using a ton of them. And that might not be enough, I don't know. I hope it is, but we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna take one strand of my bead stringing wire and I want to thread one bead onto it. Okay, I'm gonna drop that down. And you're gonna see just this amount of the bead stringing wire, okay? So that's why I say, when I said you're gonna be able to see part of it, <coughs> Excuse me. You will be able to see part of this. Hold on. <coughs> oh, that hurts. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. You will see just this little tiny bit of the bead stringing wire, but it's not much. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take both strands of my bead stringing wire, bring them together, and I'm going to thread on two six millimeter jump rings onto both. That made my eyes water. <laughs> onto both of the bead stringing wires. And for whatever reason, I can't seem to do that today. Come on now, that's not a hard thing. Okay, so two jump rings, okay? On the ends of both. And, uh-oh, <laughs> we came off of our jump ring. Stay put now. <laughs> now I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide my jump rings down, okay? And they're gonna sit at an angle. You don't really see it just yet, but you will in just a second. So separate out your bead stringing wire again. Okay, this is a good way you can see. So a bead on one, jump rings on both, okay? Now the next bead I add, it needs to go to the opposite, okay? The opposite bead stringing wire. And that's what's gonna make our little pattern and you'll see it start to take shape. So I'm gonna thread on one bead and I'm gonna drop it down. <clears throat> okay, and when I pull it down close, do you see what happens? It makes a little, a little arch. You'll see it more as the more beads we add on. So I've added one bead, taking my two bead stringing wires together again. I'm gonna thread on two jump rings on both wires. Drop them down, okay. Now, see how it creates a little chevron? Now, I'm gonna add another bead on the opposite bead stringing wire. Okay, so the one that, that opposite, the one that we just added a bead to and drop it down. Okay, now you can really see. See how our little pattern, it's gonna go up and down. It's gonna make little waves, right? With our beads and our jump rings. And the jump rings don't serve any purpose other than just looking pretty and helping to cover up the bead stringing wire and to create that beautiful little chevron shape. So now we're gonna fill up the entire bracelet with this. Like I said, this is super duper easy, but the results are so pretty. I can't wait for you to see the entire thing. So we're just gonna keep on going, okay? I'm gonna take both bead string wires together again, and I'm gonna thread on 
two jump rings. And if you wanted to use decorative jump rings, you absolutely could, right? You could use some little twisted jump rings or whatever, but I think just the plain ones look really, really good. I'm going to take the opposite bead stringing wire that doesn't, or the one that doesn't have the bead on it, right? And slide that down. And you can see how pretty that little pattern is going to come. Okay, so again, both bead stringing wires. I love instant gratification jewelry, and this is definitely instant gratification jewelry because this is like simple stringing, um, but like a step up, right? It's a step up from simple stringing because we're creating this illusion that it's like, it's this wave that's happening. It's really cool and so easy. Okay, another bead, slide that down. You can see how cool is that? The only bead string wire that's showing is just right there at the beginning and there'll be another right at the end where you'll see just a little tiny bit of the bead stringy wire. If that bothers you, then pick a pretty one. I just picked that pretty silver color, but you know, nobody's ever really gonna see it once you get your clasp on and you're wearing it. Okay, so both bead stringy wires together again and two jump rings, one, two, and you can use more. You can use one single jump ring if you want to. Um, I just find that I like the two together because it makes it a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit more noticeable. But if you only want to use one jump ring, you can, or you can use several jump rings. Like you can use up to five jump rings, and it makes um, a really interesting pattern with this. So you can change this up a lot of ways. Okay, so another bead, jump rings on both. Yeah, I'm using six millimeter. I'm using six millimeter beads and I'm using six millimeter jump rings. Um, if, you, <clears throat> if you use eight millimeter beads, you probably wanna use eight millimeter jump rings. I found that it makes a difference. Um, so whatever gauge, I'm sorry, not gauge, but whatever size bead you're gonna use, you might wanna use the same size jump ring. Um, so that you get this pattern. It'll look a little different if you use bigger jump rings. Um, it, it doesn't sit the same way. It's okay. It just, you know, I'm just, I prefer it to all kind of be smooth looking. Okay, two jump rings. I'm going to slide those down. Alternating the bead stringing wire and the beads. It, they do look like bubbles. Oh my gosh, you're right. I love it. They look like bubbles. Oh my gosh. I'm going to call this the bubble bracelet. Forget the goddess bracelet, right? This is the bubble bracelet <laughs> just because of the beads. The style though, this is the goddess style and you can do it in a lot of different ways. Like I said, we've done it in uh, with wire instead of the jump rings, but man, if you've got extra jump rings, this is, this is like the cheaty, cheating way to do it. And I kind of like it better to be honest with you. I feel like it's more uniform with the jump rings than it is with the wire. Not, not to mention a million times easier. Remember you guys when we did it with wire and I, I was doing square knots with the, um, with the artistic wire and it kept breaking. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt, <laughs> not gonna lie. The jump rings, it doesn't matter if they're open or closed jump rings. Mine are open jump rings, but they are closed. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know what I mean, right? Um, but you can use closed jump rings. It doesn't make any difference because you're not going to open them for any reason. You don't need to open them for any reason whatsoever. So solid rings will work just as well. In fact, you can even use split rings if... <laughs> this is funny because Joan and Colleen and I... Uh, not this past time that they were over here, but the last time they were over uh, last week, we were talking about the split rings and I, I get rid of my split rings. I don't like them. I don't use them. Um, but now I'm doing this project and you absolutely could use them. <laughs> I should have, I should have kept them and used them. I gave all mine to Colleen. I was like, here, I don't like these. You can take them. I do not like split rings whatsoever, but they absolutely work for this project, <laughs> oddly enough. All right, so we're just alternating. Just keep going. Now just remember though that we're an inch off, okay? So we're not really at four inches. 
almost four inches. We're actually only at three inches because we're missing an inch up here. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you're going. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go a little over what we would normally make for like a seven and a half inch bracelet. We're gonna be more like eight on the tying station. It'll look to be eight. It won't be, but it'll look that way. Wanda, I'm making a goddess bracelet with jump rings and these really pretty beads that look like bubbles. And it's so easy. I'm gonna lower you guys down a little bit too. Maybe that'll help to brighten things up. Seems kind of dark. It might just be me, but. Okay. I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm adding a bead to one of the strands and then two jump rings to both. And that's just, that's all there is to the pattern. That's all there is to it. The only other thing to see is how to finish it off um, with the bead stringing wire. So I'll be sure you stick around for that part because remember we've got two pieces of bead stringing wire that we have to deal with. So I'll show you how to, how to do that as soon as we get this all the way finished. I wanna get this one completely together because I'll probably put it in the Etsy shop for somebody. And guys, if you would like to see this project again, I will be teaching this one for a Michaels class in September. I know that's a while away, but um, I like this project so much, I'm gonna do it for a Michaels class with beads that are really cool. Almost as cool as these, maybe. Maybe just as cool. But so for this Saturday's Michaels class, though, we're making a sun catcher if you wanna come and hang out with us. It'll be a fun class. I think I have it here. I can show you the sample when we get turned back around. All right, so the two bead stringing wires together, okay? Two jump rings on both wires. Make sure you put them on both, okay? Drop those down. And then we added a bead to this wire, so this time I'm gonna add a bead to the opposite wire. I love using my tying station too. It's so convenient for all kinds of things, you know? Okay, I'm dropping the jump rings down. Added a bead to this wire, so now we're gonna add a bead to this wire. And it looks like I am gonna use beads from the other strand on that card, but that's okay. Okay, bring the two bead stringing wires together. Two jump rings, slide those down. The opposite bead stringing wire to put a bead on. Drop that down. <coughs> Two bead stringing wires. By the time this is over, my voice will be completely gone. <laughs> Thankfully, I only have one live today. Tomorrow, the hardwired group may get the whisper version of me <laughs> for our second live. Okay. So we're getting pretty close. So it says on the tying station that we're a little over five, but we're actually just a little over four, okay? Uh, because of where we're attached to our tying station, but we're getting there. And you can see I'm using up all that bead stringing wire. So I know 20 to 24 inches of bead stringing wire seems like a lot, but we really are using it up. Um, when you double the strands, the, you take into consideration how much room the beads take up, the kind of movement that happens. It takes a lot of the bead stringing wire to create this. So you, you definitely wanna be sure you give yourself enough. Okay, bringing the two strands together again. <coughs> And I'm doing jump rings, whoops, jump rings on both. Ah, no, <laughs> there we go. Drop those down. I'll be the wire whisperer tomorrow. <laughs> You're funny, Jan. It's true though, it's true though. 
try not to talk too much during regular life so that I can save my voice for tomorrow. Okay. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> Joan, <laughs> we need to learn how to whisper. What? Whispering is overrated. <laughs> Oh, this group does not know how to whisper. <laughs> Particularly Joan and Nicole. There's no whispering happening between those two, that's for sure. <laughs> Nicole says, is that even possible? I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. Oh, by the way, you guys, um, I, I do know for sure. Somebody asked. I, I do know for sure that it's bronchitis. It is definitely not um, COVID. I did take a COVID test, okay? So don't, you guys don't have to worry. Some of you are so sweet. You're very, very concerned. I am, I am COVID free. Bronchitis, I am not free of, but I'd rather have bronchitis, I gotta tell you. So it's all good. It's all good. I made sure. All right, so we're at six inches. I would I would normally be getting ready to stop here, but I'm gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna go all the way through the six, seven, and up here to probably pretty close to eight, maybe eight and a fourth, eight and a quarter, okay? Just to be sure that I have a long enough bracelet. You do still want to take into consideration that you need about an inch for your clasp because we do have to finish these ends, but um, we are also an inch off. I know I keep saying that, but I just feel like anybody who's tuning in just now that didn't see or came in a little late didn't see how we attach to the tying station. So that's why our measurement is a little bit off. All right. Yeah. Pollen is terrible here. I'm allergic to trees, and that's how all of this started. But I'm hanging in there, right? I'm a trooper. <laughs> I don't have time to be sick. Going slow, that's one thing. <laughs> I'm definitely moving slow this week. Okay, bringing my two ends together. You got two jump rings. <laughs> John, you're silly. <laughs> I'm not contagious. I told you. I'm not contagious. <laughs> Share my germs with Joan and Colleen. <laughs> okay, two jump rings. Okay, whoa. And now we just added a bead to this wire on the outside. We're gonna do this one now. Adding a bead to that. We're getting down here to the close, close to the end of our bracelet. We're right at the seven inch mark. So we're right at six inches. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Not when it's cooties. Not when it's the creeping crud. I don't wanna share those cooties with anybody. It's just unfortunate timing, but I've got it. I'm thankful. I have not been sick in a very, very long time. I spent the entire, um, you know, COVID quarantine not being sick with anything. And so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that, you know, I got that long stretch of good health. Um, and if right now I have to deal with bronchitis, then I guess that's just the way it is. I, um, I do <laughs> catch myself. I'm like, man, <laughs> God thinks I'm a rock star because he just keeps throwing things at me. <laughs> All of the stuff I'm going through and he decided I needed to be sick on top of it for whatever reason. He thinks that I clearly can handle it. So, <laughs> All right. I think I'm gonna, only going to add maybe one more or two more beads, and then we're going to finish this off, and I'll show you how to finish with our two ends of bead stringing wire. So let's throw it on another bead, take a little look 
at where we are. So we're, we're really only at six and a half. So let's do two more beads just to be on the safe side. Just like I said, this is going to go in the Etsy shop. So I want to be sure that it's big enough for uh, people who have normal size wrists and not tiny little twig wrists like mine. So I'm going to add two more beads to this and then we will finish this off. Okay. So two ends together, our last little jump rings. Okay, and then our last bead will go on this wire. Yes, this will be on my YouTube channel as well. It gets uploaded. Um, sometimes YouTube is a little um, is a little slow. It can be fickle. So sometimes it'll take the entire day for it to get uploaded, but it will be there as soon as we can get it up there. Okay. All right. So taking a little measurement, we're right at the eight inches, which is going to make us right at seven inches. And so my clasp is going to take up an inch, uh, take up about an inch. So that's how I know I've got a long enough bracelet. Okay. Cause I got to take all those things into consideration. Now I'm just going to unhook this from this little jump ring up here. Okay. Taking it off of the tying station. Look how pretty is that not awesome? I'm always in awe. It's just jump rings, but how awesome is that? I mean, it's simple, but it's gorgeous, and it looks cool with no matter what kind of beads you use. Now, I used round beads for this, but it makes them look like briolettes, right? It makes them look like they are drilled, you know, up here at the top. They're not. They're perfectly round beads. That being said, you can actually do this with briolette you know, top drill beads or little pips. You can do this with pips. You can do this with dagger. You can do this with any kind of bead you want to. And the results are a little bit different, but still very, very cool. And it's really easy, really, really easy. Okay, so now we're down here at the end. Okay, we've got to finish off our ends and we've got two strands of bead stringing wire. So to finish this off, we need to get this down to just one singular strand. So I'm going to have to use two crimps for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one crimp tube and I'm going to thread it onto both bead stringing wires. That one's got a little piece of metal sticking on it. Okay. I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to crimp. I'm going to make sure that my Bead stringing wire is not crossing inside there. And again, you're going to see a little bit of that bead stringing wire, but it's not a lot. Okay. I'm going to come in with my standard crimper tool. Hi, Becky. Okay. Coming in with my standard crimper and I'm going to give it a good crimp. Okay. I'm going to place that side to side in the front notch of the crimper tool and close that down just to make sure that I get a good closure on that. So I'm out, I'm off the screen here. Okay. Now I'm going to double check, make sure you've crimped correctly because we're going to trim off one of those wires. I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to cut it off. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and just trim it right off. Now we're down to a single strand. Before I finish the single strand, I want to take another crimp cover. I'm going to place it on to that crimp. I'm going to use my Mighty Crimper tool to close that crimp cover over the crimp bead. See how easy that was, Colleen? I hope you're watching. See how easy? There's no struggle. No struggle. Now, we're gonna have two crimp covers down here, but that's okay, I don't care. <laughs> They're pretty, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So now, I'm gonna take another crimp, okay? I'm also gonna take another, another wire guardian. I'm gonna thread my wire guardian onto the end of my bead stringing wire. I'm gonna thread that back through my crimp, and I'm gonna pull that all down next to our crimp cover that's here. Now I do have to leave a little, a little, a little bit of wiggle room here because I am going to add another crimp cover. So just make sure that you don't pull everything too, too snug. Okay. And I'm going to crimp. 
I'm gonna tidy up that crimp. I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, trim off, and I'm gonna put another crimp cover on. These just look like two pretty little beads down here at the end of our bracelets, right? Use the Mighty Crimp tool to close. Whoops, stay there <laughs> to hold it in place. Okay, Make sure I get a good closure on that. We've got two little silver beads down here and only one down here, but really nobody is ever gonna notice that there's one on one side and two on the other. At the end of this, nobody is gonna notice that part. Okay, and now the only thing I have left to do is to add two jump rings and a clasp. And you can use whatever kind of clasp you want to. I'm just gonna use a standard lobster clasp. You can put a toggle on this, you can put whatever you want to. And if you don't wanna use jump rings, you can, you can ahead of time add your clasp directly to your wire guardian, okay? So you can always do that. You don't have to use jump rings. Um, some people like to just add their clasp directly to the wire guardian so that there is no you know, there's no issue of a jump ring maybe slipping open or anything like that. Okay, and that's it. That's it. If we put it on, that's what it looks like. How pretty is that? Leanne says, what's the difference between the standard crimp tool and the mighty crimp tool? So the standard crimp tool, it's all about size. The standard crimp tool is going to handle your smaller crimps. That's going to be a size two and below right? Well, your one and two, sometimes I can crimp a three with this, but I use this mostly for size one and size two. There's actually actually a micro crimper for size zero and size one. Um, so this one is going to handle the most common crimp sizes, which is one and two. This one, the Mighty Crimper tool, is made to crimp size three, four, and five of your crimps, okay? And it doesn't matter if it's crimp tubes or crimp beads, either one for either tool, okay? It's just a, it's just a matter of size. And there's, like I said, there's still one more. It's the mighty or the micro crimper that crimps your size zeros and your size ones. Those are so tiny. I, I rarely use those at all. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're making illusion style jewelry, sometimes you use those teeny beeny ones. And e these two are way too big for that. All right, so there you go. It was our beautiful bracelet. It was super easy and fun. The results are gorgeous, right? I mean, you can't beat that. The results are what, that's like, they always say the proof is in the pudding. The proof is definitely in the pudding with this. Like, it doesn't get any easier than that, but the results are so pretty, and it's a little bit different than just your standard stringing, right? So about how many jump rings? Oh, gosh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 44, 46, oh, 44, 46, 50, 52, 54, uh, around 60, 60 to 70 jump rings, depending on your measurement. So it does take quite a few, okay? It does take quite a few jump rings. Um, but I dumped out that big pile, and I still had, I still have these left over. So, um yeah, it does take, a, it takes a bit of the jump rings, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Who says jump rings can't be, <laughs> can't be part of a design, right? Where do I get my jump rings? Uh, Fire Mountain Gems. I like theirs. And uh, Beetle on Jump Rings. Beetle on Jump Rings are my number one favorite. But when I have to buy in bulk separately, because Beetle on sends me, you know, I get jump rings from them. But if I have to buy in bulk for kits, I get Fire Mountain Gems. Um, their quality is pretty good. And yeah, you can use split rings for this if you want to. Use up your split rings. If you're like me and don't like split rings, this is a good project to use them for. Because <laughs> I'm just not a fan. Um, and yeah, you can make your own jump rings as well. All right, I'm going to turn you guys around. Oh, fortunately, I don't look nearly like I sound <laughs> for you guys. I don't know how to look great either, but I mean, you know. So here's our bracelet. Look how pretty. They do look like bubbles. They really, really do look like bubbles. That's so pretty. And it would make a really beautiful necklace as well. So you, it, you don't have to be limited to just a bracelet. This makes a gorgeous necklace. Um, you know, you can make short sections of it for earrings if you want to. 
just makes a really fun design that's easy to rec I love it. I love it so much. So, so pretty. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I love that shimmer to those beads. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> All right, let me show you the sample for our Michaels class. Do I have the sample? <laughs> Let's hope I do. So the Michaels class this Saturday is a sun catcher. We're just using um, some large thick gauge wire and wire wrapping to it. So what's the front? Does it matter? We're making these little sun catchers on Saturday. That's with the Michaels class. So if you've not signed up and you want to make a sun catcher, come and hang out with us for our Michaels class. It's at 2 p.m. Eastern time on the Michaels website. You sign up now, they will send you a notification for when class is started, and I'll be there. <laughs> um, anything else? No, I can't think of anything else because I still have, um, I still got lives tomorrow. So you guys will see me tomorrow for the Feel Good Friday. Hopefully I am going to be feeling a little bit better tomorrow. Um, so feel good Friday is tomorrow. I'll have new kits in the shop. I'll have some finished pieces in the Etsy shop as well. Um, and I'll also be getting together with our hardwired group tomorrow afternoon at 4 PM. So, uh, it's going to be a busy Friday and Saturday for me. I promise everybody I'll take Sunday to try to rest. <laughs> I'll rest a little this afternoon as well. Okay. Uh, so thank you guys for being concerned. I appreciate that a lot. You guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. This will go onto the YouTube. You guys will be able to rewatch it anytime you want to. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye guys. <laughs>